Is anybody who isn't Harry Potter going to understand this? <laughs> uh, I, everyone's a Harry Potter fan. Okay. So, Jenny, what the heck are we doing here? Well, I am sneaking off to Florida to elope in about 22 days. So. Really? Yeah. And I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on a dress. It's going to be like a three minute ceremony. Do you, do you, we're done. We've been together 15 years. So it's not all pomp and circumstance. So I ordered a dress for $28.95 on Amazon and I'm going to add my own Jenny flair to it using the 24R. I am flaring it with ore mask here and I've got some gold paint. I'm wearing a green dress as a, a wink and a nod to my packers and I'm going to be painting it in gold. We're also going to be stopping by the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando, so we thought we'd add a little magic to our three-minute elopement. You're a Harry Potter geek? I'm a huge Harry Potter geek. Okay, what about Bard? Huge Harry Potter geek. It doesn't really get any geekier than we do. <laughs> so what are you putting on the dress? The front of the dress is going to say, um, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. And at the end of the ceremony, we're going to toss off our Harry Potter robes and the back's going to say mischief managed. <laughs> that is too creative. I love it. It's kind of fun. It and, you fun. know, weddings are boring, and so we want to make it as unboring as possible. I not and... imagine you would have a boring one. <laughs> at all. Is Diesel going to be there? No, Diesel, unfortunately, is actually going to be staying with Matt Coppola, who oh. is the other tool and die maker. <gasps> at Tormach. So let's make a dress. Let's make a dress. Woo! Woohoo! So here I've kind of blanked off the rest of the table um, because I don't want to lose suction. I want the suction to focus just on this real thin transfer paper. Okay. And so I'm going to tape all the way around, get the air bubbles out, and I am using the Tormach drag knife. Okay. So the, the blue part, the actual transfer part, is about 3 thou thick. Okay. The backing's about 3 thou thick. So we're only going to go about tooth out into the backing and that way when I pull it off well, I'll show you. Okay but well, wait how are you gonna have to get suction on the spoil board? Suction it sucks through, through the, yeah. It's suction through. Yep. Okay. So yeah we've got our spoil board here it's not perfect because we do have suction. not a lot of suction okay. just enough. I'm gonna tape it down all the way around get the air bubbles out and then we're gonna add the suction first and get some just towards the yeah kind of towards the edge there. There we go. And we're going to seal it all the way around. Look how awesome that works. So this isn't like standard machining where you put a piece in, you're going to indicate your part. It's, it's a little less uh, precise than that. Although depth, depth is going to be really important. Like I said, I'm going 5 thou down. Okay. And I'm going to use Path Pilot to tell me if I'm in the right ballpark for my X and Y. Okay. So I want to bring it down, kind of close to the part. I'm using the DXF conversational function for this, so it's just a DXF or a vector file. I know that um, my part is 19.61 inches, and so I want to make sure that my paper is at least that. You can see I started kind of off the part, lower left-hand corner for my work coordinate system. I'm going to look at it and say, yeah, that's close enough, I'm on the paper. Um, I'm far enough over. So now I'm going to set my X and Y. And we have this handy dandy new little um, regeneration feature up here. So now I can clear all those previous tool paths and I can look at it and say, okay, that's about right. If you're not sure, I like to do this if I'm doing real quick stuff. I will run around the part once and make sure that I have enough material. And I've got plenty of room here. You can see I'm not going to be cutting anything off. So I like to do a little, real quick little uh, rectangle around my workspace. That way I know that I'm not cutting any part of the transfer off. Little post-it note, three thousandths of an inch. So I'm just catching right there. You can see I got some drag right there. And I'm just going to tell it we're at three thousandths. If we did this right, we should cut just into the, the top transfer layer and just a tiny bit into the back side. I'm going to just regenerate this and we're going to hit go and see what it does. 
Oh, it's important to note that I'm not turning the spindle on for this operation. I went back and changed my file. To spin I just wiped out all the spindle commands. Um, this is important because it's just a knife that's dragging over the surface. It's very similar to some of the other projects that we've done with the diamond drag. So I'm just going to use the blue okay. pieces. I'm going to use the center pieces of like the D and the A. But I'm just going to peel these letters away, lay this on my dress so when I paint, it paints into the letters. Okay. So. So this is the completed product or the completed dress. I brought home those stencils. I took her home and like a classy chick, I went and stapled it down to a big old chunk of cardboard and put the transfers over and painted within the lines, just like I did back when I was in kindergarten. So the paint that I used was speedball paint. It's a screen printing paint and it's actually activated by heat. So what I did was paint it uh, within the stencil. I did about three to four coats. Once it was all dry, I pulled it up. Then I took a tea, tea towel and I ironed it. Um, each letter I ironed about four minutes or so because that's what kind of melds it into the fabric. So during our very, very low key ceremony, we had our Harry Potter robes on and the front of my dress was, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good, just like on the Marauders map from the Harry Potter books. Um, once it was all said and done and uh, I got the old ring um, at the very end. We flipped up my Harry Potter robe with our little mischief managed on the back. So everybody has the best intentions when they go and elope and our ceremony ran a little bit long. It was about four minutes and 20 seconds. Um, so we did, we lost an extra minute or so to go do actual fun stuff, but it ended up all in all being a pretty fantastic trip. And now I am Jenny B to the second power. Um, with our equipment, kind of one of my favorite parts of working at Tormach is I find unique and unconventional ways to use the equipment. Um, I don't know if I would ever replace a Cricut with the 24R, but I did find it was a very suitable um, stencil cutting machine. And I have a feeling I'm going to have more projects in the future just for around the house, for fundraisers, that kind of stuff on our 24R. And now I'm Jenny B to the second power. <laughs> and now I'm Jenny B to the second power. <laughs>